How did you sleep last night? Uh, rather better, I suspect, than the man who lives here, because it has been a whirlwind 24 hours for the Prime Minister. A whirlwind 12 hours, really, hasn't it? Uh, he, this morning he's in there fighting again for his political survival after two unexpected high-profile cabinet resignations, uh, first from the Health Secretary, Sajid Javid, and then from the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, the man who lives next door. Uh, both of them attacked Boris Johnson's leadership as they quit. He acted quickly. He was working late into the night here. He's replaced them with Steve Barclay and Nadim Zahawi. And we're going to speak to Mr Zahawi later in the programme. But then several more resignations followed late into the evening, mainly among uh, junior ministers. And critics say it is now a case of when, rather than if, Mr Johnson himself will be forced out. But we've said that before haven't we? So this, throughout this morning's programme, we're going to speak to members from all sides of the House to find out what happens next. Uh, we're going to talk to Nick Erdley, our political correspondent, in a moment. But first, David uh, Wallace Lockhart can bring us up to date on Mr Johnson's most serious leadership crisis so far. Two influential cabinet ministers who decided they'd had enough. Within minutes of one another, Rishi Sunak resigned as Chancellor and Sajid Javid resigned as Health Secretary. Mr Javid remained tight-lipped when he returned home yesterday evening. I'm just going to go and spend some time with my family. But the reasons were there in black and white when the pair submitted resignation letters. The outgoing Chancellor said the public rightly expect government to be conducted properly, competently and seriously. I believe these standards are worth fighting for, and that is why I am resigning. While the outgoing health secretary said the British people rightly expect integrity from their government. We may not have always been popular, but we have been competent. Sadly, the public are concluding that we are now neither. Their exits, along with various junior government figures, came swiftly after Boris Johnson apologised for his handling of appointing Chris Pincher to a new government position in February. It emerged Boris Johnson had been told about a formal complaint previously made about Mr Pincher when he was a Foreign Office Minister. That was something Number 10 had previously denied. I apologise for, uh, for it. I think in, in, in hindsight it was uh, the wrong thing to do. Uh, I apologise to everybody who's been uh, badly affected by it. Yeah. So can Mr Johnson survive? Perhaps unsurprisingly, the Labour leader wants him gone. They backed him when he broke the law. They backed him when he lied. They backed him when he mocked the sacrifices of the British people. So they have been complicit as he has disgraced his office and let down his country. Allies of the Prime Minister insist he can carry on. Um, well, I am um, fully supportive of the Prime Minister. Uh, I think that he is the right man for the job. He has a very significant mandate from the British people. He had a majority of 80 only just over two and a half years ago. And these sort of squalls happen in politics, but the best politicians carry on calmly. For now, Boris Johnson is intent on staying put with a new top team around him. Nadim Zahawi will take over as Chancellor, moving on from Education Secretary. Michelle Donnellan will take over that role. And Steve Barclay is the new Health Secretary. This morning, Boris Johnson's position looks tricky, but he's previously ridden out calls to step down. He seems determined to do so again. David Wallace Lockhart, BBC News, Westminster. So buckle up, it could be another dramatic day here in Downing Street. Nick Erdley, our political correspondent, is with us. Right, I'm not going to ask you what's going to happen next because nobody knows really, do they? But, but how could this progress over the next few hours and days, Nick? Well, there's no sign at the moment, John, that Boris Johnson is going to move out of there voluntarily. The, the positions that he appointed last night were all designed to be a message from him to say, I'm going nowhere, I think I can get on with running the country. But there is no doubt that this is a, still a huge crisis for the Prime Minister. Could there be more junior ministers who walk today? We had one resignation late last night. There are other people on resignation watch today, potentially adding to the sense of crisis in there. Tory backbenchers are extremely 
unhappy, they're extremely uncomfortable with what's happened over the last few days, and they're wargaming what to do next. Now, we've spoken before about the 1922 committee, the committee of Tory backbenchers. They are electing their executive within the next few days, 18 people who will decide whether to change the rules, to allow another confidence vote in the Prime Minister. It's amazing to think, it was only a month ago today, that the last one was, well, there could be another one in the next couple of weeks. Even before the summer recess? Even before the summer recess. Tory rebels, the Prime Minister's critics in his own party, are increasingly confident that they have the numbers to, to win that uh, executive election and to force a rule change. So this crisis is going to roll on and on and on for the next couple of weeks. There is no doubt that, again, the Prime Minister has been weakened. He defies political gravity so often, though, doesn't he? How many times <laughs> on breakfast do we talk about a crisis for Boris Johnson? In the last month alone, 40% of his MPs voted to get rid of him. His ethics advisor quit. He lost two major by-elections, including one of the safest seats in the country. He's had this Chris Pincher row. Now he's got two of his most senior cabinet ministers walking. For many prime ministers, it would be game over. Even one of those. E yeah. e even yeah. one of those things would be yeah. enough to, to force him out. The question over the next few hours and the next few days is, can Boris Johnson do the almost unthinkable and stay in post? He certainly wants to. That's his plan. Many Tory backbenchers think that think differently and they're going to try and force them out. And today, even today, within this hours of this happening, he's got to go back down the road to Parliament. He's got Prime Minister's questions at lunchtime and then he's got a big appearance in, in front of a committee as well. So he's under massive public pressure today. It's going to be a gruelling day for the Prime Minister. You know, PMQs is always the, the big moment of the week where I've no doubt Keir Starmer will try and skewer the Prime Minister and say, you can no longer lead the country. It's time for a change. Watch out from, for friendly fire, so-called friendly fire, from his own side saying, you've lost our confidence, you need to go. And then there's the Liaison Committee, which is senior committee chairs this afternoon, who will be grilling the Prime Minister as well. It, it, in, in some ways, it's the worst possible day for Boris Johnson. And as I say, there's also that question. There are some ministers on the junior rank, not at cabinet level that we see walking in that door every week, but some other well-known faces who are still on resignation watch. The Prime Minister got through last night. The danger's far from over.